welcome to another episode of the Criminal Calendar. I'm really pleased to welcome back after four years, I think it's four years, Rita Mae Brown. Hi. Hi. And Phoenix really has changed in the last four years according to your <laughs> flight in, huh? It's on steroids. <laughs> it's just growing. Did you recognize any of our famous landmarks like Camelback Mountain? I did. Well, that'll never change and it's so beautiful. It's really different, though, from the part of the world that you are in. I was just saying to Rita Mae that I always think, because I spent 20 years of my life where she lives, um, that the mountains here are like the skeletons of the mountains that you're used to. I think that's a wonderful way to put it. And yet, uh, and like all mountains, though, there's a magic to them. There's a spirituality. And you really feel it. And you particularly feel it here. It's interesting, because really the Appalachians are the oldest. I think geologically, it's, um, you know, in terms of the rock, they're the oldest chain of mountains, and a couple of people have made a case, I think Sharon McCrum, that that chain goes on and reappears in, um, in Ireland and Scotland. There's some kind of a mineral belt in the mountains that, that you can trace, you know, across the Atlantic and, and up into the rest of it. But what I miss and what I think is tragic that you and I will never see are the chestnut trees. You know, it's funny you bring that up because I'm on a search for old chestnut rails. Wonderful. Uh, you can still find them in old farms that have fallen down, you know, on their upper, so to speak, in West Virginia or whatever, and the old, because the chestnut never, uh, the rails never disintegrate, or some of the old cabins before the great blight hit, <clears throat> and uh, uh, I don't know if your viewers know, but there was a tremendous chestnut blight and it killed all the trees at the turn of the last century, and um, the only ones that have survived are ones that are in the middle of meadows way apart from other trees so the disease didn't get them. Well, that's maybe 10 trees on the East Coast. But uh, you can still find the stuff that was cut before then. So I'm on a mission. Do you know what? You're the only person that's ever brought that up in my life. I can't believe it. How about that? Well, I read something the other day that said there is some progress being made in developing for America a new blight-resistant chestnut tree. But when I thought of it, I have at the moment the crime writer Lindsay Davis from England who's my house guest. And she lives adjacent to Greenwich Park. Her back wall of her um, ancient house is, is the wall of Greenwich Park. And when I was there for Bob Barnard's Diamond Dagger last June, I went for a walk up into Greenwich Park and it's covered in chestnut trees and they were in bloom and those candles. And I see why now they're called candles because they really, the blossom really is this kind of candle structure. I mean, it isn't just like a magnolia. It's, it's really vertical. And I thought, man, how those mountains must have looked when those trees were all over and those gorgeous things come out. In fact, I read somewhere that said that the Smokies may have been called that for the chestnut blossoms and not for the mist and the clouds. Have you ever heard that? No, I haven't. But it's, it's interesting that you bring up the, the Blue Ridge Mountains and the Smokies because I think it's a perfect environment for a writer. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the reason being, for me anyway, is this was once the highest mountain chain in the world. Right. And when you look at them now, you see the power of time. And it really does kind of lift you and get you thinking. And, and the mystery of time. And then off you go. You're ready to write. They have been ground down. But you know, one of the things I love about the area, I read the law in Charlottesville, in, in, the, in the University of Virginia Law Library. So I have read your books, all of them, uh, the mysteries from day one, because I'm so interested in the area. Um, and spent a lot of time there. And, and I think the hunt country, because it's not really a very American concept, there's not that much of America that's really hunt country, is so gorgeous. And you obviously love it. it yes, I'm a master of foxhounds. Right. And I carry the horn for Oak Ridge. And uh, I slept with foxhounds as a child. <laughs> they were in my grandfather's uh, little house, so I slept on the floor with them. And, um, but the interesting thing about hounds which will occasionally appear in the mysteries, although um, Sneaky really wants top billing. She really wants the cats to be the center of the world. In her mind, she is. But um, we, you look at the friezes in the Egyptian tombs, people hunting with hounds on couple straps, which are still used to this day. Uh, Homer mentions hunting with hounds in the Odyssey. When Henry Hudson came up the river that bears his name, in the half moon, he had foxhounds on his ship. Isn't that amazing? It really is. In fact, you've written three mysteries about a, mas a mistress of foxhounds. I love those books. I was very saddened to see some note in the um, 
record is full cry. The third one, then it might be the last one. We it really only... isn't. Oh, it really good. isn't. I'm so I think glad. that was just a, a, a publicity mistake or whatever. Because the next one I'm going to do uh, in the Hunt Country is about the Hunt Ball, which is really, I mean, people just carry on like sin. But they're beautifully dressed when they do it. Uh, but it'll be a while before I get to that. Uh, but it, it's the great passion of my life. And like all passions, it's completely irrational. And I know I look a fool, and that's okay. So there's a natural fox population in Charlotte's? In, in there is. There's red foxes Eastern and Virginia? gray foxes, and they're a little different. The grays are smaller, uh, and the grays will often run a figure eight. When you're on a gray, you'll kind of know by the pattern that the, that the fox is doing. And they, they'll climb a tree if they want to. Reds can, but they rarely do. The red will often go in a straight line and then might, you know, do some variations, but they'll inevitably come back to their dens. So, um, and by the pattern or where you, you pick up the scent, you usually know who you're on. And, and they can get away because it's not like you do in England. In England, they hunt to kill, and here we don't. And I don't mean to bash the English. I don't mean it in that way. They aren't brutes. But wool is one of their major export products, and the fox can really kill the newborn lamb. So a fox is vermin to them and has dire economic consequences, where for us it doesn't matter. So it's a sport, right? Yeah, we don't need to kill them. I found it fascinating that you had done these three. I'm, I'm bringing it up because I know that your viewers today are familiar with your Sneaky Pie series. Some of them may not be as familiar with the fox hunting series, which I have liked really well. Uh, Full Cry is the third, and then it was Hotspur was the second, and yes. the first one, it's right here, is Out Fox. Sister Jane, what an interesting character. Sister Jane, um, in full cry, is, is it's now 71. And in fox hunting, that's not very old. Is that right? That's <laughs> not a, Well, people, their bodies, you know, they might have 71-year-old faces, but their bodies are 30 or 40 because they ride hard, they live hard, they're mostly in really good shape, and you're out in all kinds of weather, so you're tough. I mean, you're fighting, you mean, virus and stuff like that, you don't get it like everybody else. It's because you're tough. You know, you're out the way we used to be out. Um, the, there's a woman, a marvelous woman, Jenny Moss, who's the master of Moore County Hounds in, uh, in the Sand Hill area of uh, Southern, Southern Pines, North Carolina. She's in her middle 90s. She's, she is the master, as I said, and she rides young thoroughbreds that she's bred herself, and she just flies right by you. Well, I was thinking that maybe there was some autobiographical stuff to Sister Jane. Maybe it's wish fulfillment now that I've listened to you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, 71 will close in fast, so it'll be here before I know it. I don't know where the time do goes, but I think everybody watching you doesn't know where it goes either. But you obviously um, had experience. I mean, you can tell from reading the books that this is something you really knew about being. Is it master? You're not a mistress of the fox. You're a That's master, master of the fox. That's a, MFH. Okay. MFH behind the name. Um, and so here's Sister Jane, who is, you know, closing in in 70 and then passing it, and she's master of the fox. And I was thinking to myself that really, if you think about it, a fox hunt's just a great place for people to die, whether naturally yes. or not. Mm -hmm. It's also a great place for people to have affairs because their blood is hot. Ah. And there's an awful lot of that. Well, you have fun with that sort of aspect in the Sneaky Pie <laughs> books, although it's a little toned down. But, uh, well, I'm pleased to hear that you're going to go on, because I think those books are really grand fun. And what, in, what prompted you to, to start a second mystery line? You know, I wish I could say that I thought these things out and that I plotted it and I was really smart, but I'm not the brightest bulb on the Christmas tree. Um, I just love it, and it's so much fun. I thought, oh, I want to write one and see it, if the public will be interested. And my publisher was like, oh, yeah, fox hunting. People aren't going to want to read about fox hunting. I said, oh, just do one. Indulge me. Indulge me. And God bless them. They do. Um, I mean, they indulge me by sending me to Phoenix and you, um, which is wonderful. So they did, and it just did great, you know. And then they did the next one, so I think we're all right. And I think part of the appeal is... So many people live in cities now. I mean, really, the bulk of not just our population, the world. And there's a hunger. There's a hunger to reconnect what we once were, to be, be back to animals, to understand, really understand the seasons, to feel it in your bones. And of course, if you fox hunt, you do. That's, that's your life. 